Salute, giving all praise to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shabbat, Shem, God, Kodash, double honor to the apostles and elders, peace and mercy and grace to the household of faith, the elect. Just want to do a quick little report, man. I wanted to bring this out. Um, a little something I retweeted, and I, I was going to get to it later, but I just came across something on my ring feed. Somebody posted in the area about the water looking brown, looking dirty. And um, I was like, oh, shit. I had just did a retweet on this. So I was like, that's the spirit made me want me to touch on it. So I'm going to go ahead and speak about it. You know, this uh, chick here, Lauren Witzke, posted, you know, she said pretty much the WF is signaling the next global catastrophe, you know, because these people, they tried to get the world's attention with the, the jab. Then now, now they doing the, the climate change. And now, you know, they're discussing the water. I'm going to play this clip so you can be, uh, you know, be sober and be vigilant about what's happening right now. So, of course, true with COVID, right? We are all only as healthy as our neighbor is on our street and our city and our region and our nation and globally. And did we solve that? Like, did we actually manage to vaccinate everyone in the world? No. So highlighting water as a global commons and what it means to work together and see it both out of that kind of global commons perspective, but also the self-interest perspective, because it is it does have that parallel. It's not only important, but it's also important because we haven't managed <laughs> to solve those problems with, which had similar attributes. And water is something that people understand. You know, climate change is a bit abstract. Some people understand it really well. Some understand it a bit. Some just don't understand it. Water, every kid knows how important it is to have water. When you're playing football and you're thirsty, you need water. So there's also something about really getting citizen engagement around this and really in some ways experimenting with this notion of the common good. Can we actually deliver this time in ways that we have failed miserably other times? And hopefully we won't keep failing on the other things, but anyway. All right, there's a wicked agenda at play, and these people ain't playing, man. They dead ass serious about this shit. When you look at the back, the background here, all right, you see that world, you see that, the, the logo there. If you look through all the O's, there's a line going through the, all the O's. All right, that line through the O, that's six, that's six, that's six. This is what John the Revelator said. Here is wisdom. This would be the number of the man. This would be a symbol of what we were supposed to look out for in the last days. All right, some uh, a group of people that would be coming, and the six would be, the 666 would be the um, a telltale sign that these are the people Right, that we need to be looking out for that the Lord is going to use as the sword, the wicked, all right, that's going to be revealed in the latter days before they judged. Sirach 29 and 21, it said, the chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and a house to cover shame. So the principal things that you need in life is water and bread and clothing and, and a house to cover shame, right? Sirach 39 and 26, it says, the principal things for the whole use of a man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, and flour, wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of grape, and oil, and clothing. All these things are for good to the godly, so to the sinners they'll turn to evil. So the wicked, they're turning these things that we need, you know, the principal things of life. They're taking things that are essential to life, and they're turn. They, they doing evil with it. You know, they're they making the water uh, brown, undrinkable, unbathable, uh, full of, um, full of uh, uh, fucking uh, uh, medications, uh, full of uh, uh, lead uh, in some places, full of fluoride, all right? I got another one because what this is a part of the sorrows coming on every side. Um, the plague is coming and not slack, right? This is um, 2nd Edges 16 and 8. The mighty Lord sent it the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? And the Lord is doing it through Esau. He's doing it through the councils of these wicked. You know, that this is a part of their councils, them coming together on these different groups, you know, the forums and discussing these these uh, plans that, that they have for the world. And they're bringing plagues that the Lord is sanctioning, right, through the scriptures. But we go to verse 14. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. Right now, let me jump down to verse 37 or 39. It says, even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth and the world shall mourn and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. So it's going to be something, you know, everywhere you look is something. And um, I was watching a movie the other day and it was like, man, it's always something. It's always something. I forgot what movie that was. It's always something. You know, and that's what he's all doing. It's like it's always something. And now it's water issues. Now, 
Um, another thing they're doing is um, they uh, vaccinating people through through the air. All right, might have to do another one on that, but they're doing it. Um, they putting shit in the air to 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 go in, uh, to to use the um, the nanobots to go inside you to to hit you. So, you know, the most high is making the plagues come upon the earth all types of ways. But you know, don't fret, don't trip, don't don't be discouraged about these things because the scriptures been preparing this, us for this and, and what the scriptures prepare the elect for is the victory all right because revelation 14 chapter uh, or the 15 chapter rather there's a victory that's had over all of this over all of this man because it's not us that's that's fighting the fight it's the lord is fighting the fight and he has already decreed that the elect are going to get the victory over the the beast his image his mark and all of these things revelation 15 and uh, three, it says, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant, all right, my shot in the Hebrew, the servant of the Most High God, Yahweh, and the song of the Lamb, which is Yahweh Shai, saying, great and marvelous are they, are thy works, Lord God Almighty, all right, Adawan, um, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Lashadjah, just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints. Um, and what's the song of Moses? The song of Moses was a song of victory, you know, that we had in the time of uh, ancient Egypt. When you go to Exodus, I want to say the 15th chapter, and one it says, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. See, so this was just after the Most High defeated Pharaoh and his army. All right, because you had Jake, you know, scared. They like, man, we out here in, in, in front of this water, and we got Pharaoh and them right behind us. Like, what are we going to do? And then what the most I did was through Moses, he had Moses split the sea, had a, had the children of Israel go through. And then when Pharaoh and them tried to follow, he had Moses close that bitch up and, and drown and drown the enemy. So the most I really got the victory and, and gave the victory to Israel. And what Israel did was they, they sang and praised the Lord. So this is what's getting ready to happen now over, you know, these these assholes, man, because when you look at it. They're out. It looked like it, it looked like it's no way to get through this. Like, damn, they doing this. They doing what to the food? They doing what to the air? They put mosquitoes in there. God damn, like, what what do we do? But the Lord going, you know what I'm saying? He going to make us get through it, man. We going to get through it, man. You got to believe that. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I want to push out there, man. We, we going we gonna to get the victory. I was thinking about this this morning. We going to win, man. We going to win because the victory is already written. You see? The most high don't care about these people. He just set them up so he can show his power. All right? Romans the ninth chapter, and we'll close out on that one. Romans 9, verse 17, it says, For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, right? Talking about Pharaoh, the most high raised Pharaoh up for what? It says that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout the earth. Because after the most high took Pharaoh down and the Egyptians and brought the Israelites from Egypt, the um the power the name of the Lord was magnified in the earth. All right, you go to Joshua, the ninth chapter, and verse nine, it says, And they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. All right, and that Lord in all caps is Yahweh, the God of Israel, right? It says, For we have heard the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt. But if I'm not mistaken, these were, uh, these were yeah, these were Hamites. They said into to Joshua, they, you know, they said we heard of the fame of him and all he did in Egypt. So the most I did that so his name could be famous. And the most I was about to do it again to these people. All right. To these assholes right here. All right. So this is their last go round. You know, let them go ahead and do what they're going to do. All right. And don't be scared, man. Don't be afraid. All right. The Lord with us. All right. The Lord ain't about to let these goddamn devils win, man. They about to lose. All right. On the next one.